Dr. Grant Liu will now present the counter argument. Uh, thanks, Jenna and Stacy, for asking me to participate. So, uh, everyone missed the uh, political uh, commentary. So, like with Brexit in the 2016 election, I'm going to go after the people who are undecided, and especially after the people who didn't vote. Okay? <laughs> all right. So, do all children with optic neuritis need steroid treatment at presentation? And the answer is no. Now, I will tell you that I'm going to agree for the most part with Paul, but there is, I think, a small subset of uh, children that do not need steroids. Uh, this is my disclosure. Okay, so uh, let's just go back a, a little bit in history. So um, here's a child that presented with uh, bilateral optic neuritis with bilateral uh, optic nerve enhancement. Um, I had a chance to spend time with Simmons LaSalle when I was a resident, and Simmons was very conservative. Uh, and I took that conservative approach to Children's Hospital for the first year or two that I practiced and didn't treat any of these kids with steroids, and they all did fine. Um, unfortunately, uh, as well, uh, if, uh, if you're going to treat a child with IV steroids, they're most likely going to have to be admitted, right? So it's easy to uh, arrange a visiting nurse to have an uh, adult uh, to have steroids at home, but with kids would typically admit them because of social reasons, because of the IV, because of the mood changes, etc. So things changed, unfortunately, when the uh, optic neuritis treatment trial was published. As Paul alluded to, this was a randomized prospective multicenter study uh, uh, published in the early 90s by Roy Beck, and uh, this studied the outcomes in adults with acute optic neuritis. Patients were given placebo versus steroids versus IV steroids. Interestingly, the risk of uh, MS decreased in the first year or two, but then uh, 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 became uh, the same as the other groups. Um, but most importantly, as Paul alluded to, the vision recovers faster with steroids. And for most groups, for most groups, the steroids did not change final visual acuity. So it makes people better faster, but doesn't change the final outcome. Unfortunately, what most of, at least neurologists and ophthalmologists that were polled, they somehow used this study to justify that all patients with optic neuritis need steroids. I don't exactly know how that happened, but it's actually become part of practice, even with MS docs, for instance, that uh, every demyelinating event needs steroids, and I don't really think that that's the case. So this is my approach. I think that uh, with mild unilateral vision loss, they don't really need steroids. Um, I do agree that if there's bilateral vision loss to any degree and severe unilateral vision loss, uh, we do give them IV steroids. The dose is 15 milligrams per kilogram per day. You can divide it by four or give it all at once for three days, followed by a prednisone taper. And in most cases, the visual uh, prognosis is excellent. Um, we published data regarding this uh, about 10 years ago, but then uh, Jenna and her group uh, confirmed this, uh, that uh, in their retrospective observational cohort study, um, that 81% were at least 2020 and 89% were at least 2040 at one year. Now, most of the patients were treated with steroids, but uh, not all. Again, just emphasizing the point that most patients are going to do well whether you give steroids or not. Um, Anne Ye uh, uh, addressed this issue in a paper in 2016, again, advocating children be treated with IV methylprednisolone for three to five days, but again, emphasized there are no clinical trials to establish the efficacy of this treatment modality. Uh, uh, this paper in 2014 looked at the difference between shorter and longer steroids and found no difference. So um, we, we would love to have a pediatric optic neuritis treatment trial, right, comparing, say, oral steroids versus IV steroids versus placebo. It's a rare disorder to begin with. We need multiple centers. Uh, we need some preliminary data. Um, so mostly through the efforts of Stacy and Mike Repka, you know, a bunch of us got together and said, well, we really need to get some preliminary data uh, regarding outcomes in uh, pediatric optic neuritis to hopefully set us up for a pediatric uh, optic neuritis treatment trial. And uh, in the uh, six-month outcome data, if you look here uh, uh, at enrollment, uh, median visual acuity was 2,100. And again, most patients do extremely well in a six months. Median visual acuity was 2020. Another way to look at this, uh, with the histogram on top, visual acuities at enrollment were swayed towards bad vision way to the right, and then uh, at six months, uh, vision recovered. Again, most patients were treated with steroids, not all, um, uh, emphasizing the point that people do pretty well. Now, unfortunately, uh, we were not able to uh, meet our, um, uh, the number of people that we wanted to uh, have in the study. 
Interestingly and ironically, because we had a two-week window uh, where we wanted people to be enrolled, but many children showed up four to six weeks later because outside hospitals simply were giving IV steroids. And so we wanted to do the study to establish whether IV steroids are necessary, but we couldn't do it because people were being treated with IV steroids. Very interesting. So um, I do want to emphasize what Paul said, that this uh, list is changing and we're adding NMO uh, and anti-MOG. Um, and uh, yes, the test takes a couple days to come back, but I think with NMO you can detect this early on when there's enhancement from globe to chiasm uh, and MOG when there's sort of perineural enhancement. And I agree, those patients should be treated with steroids. And then many of them do need plasma exchange uh, afterwards. Again, just to summarize, not all patients need IV steroids. Thank you.